You got 5,000 bucks to spend on a Corvette. Which one should you get? Hey, what's happening guys? Today we are checking out a couple of Corvettes. Now on my left here, I've got a 1980 C3 Corvette. It's the L82 edition, uh, you know, V8 rear wheel drive, just like every other Corvette. On my right, I have a 1990 C4 Corvette. Uh, this one's uh, tune port, injection, um, 350 as well. Rear wheel drive, just like the other one. I'm just gonna go through both of these cars, kind of show you the, the what's good, what's bad and which at the end of the day is the better car to have and to own. So stick around, we're gonna check out these cars. So I'd like to start with getting in these cars. Some Corvettes are known to be a real pain to crawl in and out of. Uh, however, I would say that this one is relatively easy. You open the door, step in, you get your tilt wheel, you just walk right in. It's not a big deal. <sighs> However, in this car, I find it a little harder to get in and out of. I'm a young spry guy yet, but uh, it does make it a bit more challenging to get in and out of this car. It does still have a st tilt steering wheel, which you know gives you a little bit of help, but the real problem is, is how much lower you are sitting in this car as opposed to that car. Uh, dips down a good foot into the floor where you're kind of crawling into the cavity of this thing and you're not able to just kind of get right in and out of it. You gotta crawl in and out of it. And for, for older Corvette aficionados, that might be a little bit more of a task. So now that you're in, uh, let's talk about the interior of these cars. Uh, I would say that this 80 is looking a little long in the tooth. It, uh, it was designed, you know, early 70s, late 60s, early 70s. So by this time it had already gotten kind of dated. And it's going to continue on for four or five more years until the, the new generation comes out. So I would say that this, it has a, not even a classic feel to it yet. It's just really sort of a cheapness feel to it. Everything is just kind of plasticky and 80s and cheap. That being said, it does have some pretty decent leather seats. These might be aftermarket in this car though. And uh, it, it's, it's Spartan, but it works. I mean, there's, it's, it's really easy to take care of because there's not a lot of it. So in that regard it's it's okay nothing spectacular and now we're in the 90 and it does look like the 90s in here this this porno red interior is not something you'd see in any car no matter what brand or uh you know maker this day and age they just don't make interiors this red anymore it's too intense uh that being said i think it feels a little bit little bit nicer than the than the 80 i think they were trying a little bit more uh, the digital dash is really cool, actually. It gives you all sorts of readings and whatnot. It, it looks kind of retro in the right sort of way, I would say. Um, and I, I appreciate about that. And I think that'll kind of, that'll hold up well if it doesn't break, which I, I don't see it doing, but you never know. This one also, nice leather seats. They really hug you on this one. It, uh, they're comfortable. You, you can get in this thing and just drive. Uh, as far as comfort wise, you're not going to be without and I think that's awful nice So now that you're in it, what's it like to start up? Well, this Corvette is fuel injected uh, you know, Fully electronic ignition everything like that. It's it's a pretty advanced car I would say for 1990 as far as that goes. So all you gotta do is stick that key in and Letter rip tater chip, nothing to it. Now the 80 is a little bit more of a shooting match. Uh, it is carbureted. It has HEI ignition, all all decent stuff. But there, it, you have to. There's it, it has a potential to be a little bit more temperamental. So I got to pump the gas a little bit. I got to turn the key. So there you are, you know, it's a little bit more temperamental, but it definitely has that much more throaty V8 sound. It's got side pipes too, so. Some will appreciate that and some won't, uh, but it sounds cool, I would say, you know, going down the road, it's got a, it's got a bark to it. 
Uh, that being said, it has the potential to kind of leave you stranded, and it has stranded me several times. So now let's talk about power these things make and ease of working on them. Now this car, unfortunately, was born right in the smog era of things. Uh, they choked these motors out to nothing. This car made 190 horsepower and 280 foot-pounds of torque, and I think they're being pretty generous with that. In ease of work, you, you could fix this thing with a monkey wrench and a ball-peen hammer, probably, as far as like carburetor and, and ignition stuff go. So that, that's a definite plus in that neck of the wood. And it's an easier motor to upgrade. You could put a set of heads on it. You could put a better cam in it, and it would make some more power. Uh, however, it, it's hard to get at most everything in this car once you get lower. It's got these huge sweeping, you know, fenders on it that go deep into it. And suspension's okay to work on in this car. But motor stuff, uh, I, I hate doing the spark plugs on these things. And that's, that's a foul, foul job on this. From the factory with that tune port injection on this one, these would make 245 horsepower and 375 foot-pounds of torque and that is substantially more than the other one and it definitely shows it this thing is zippy down the road um, and ease of work i absolutely love the clamshell on this thing uh, it makes getting at most everything on this car super super easy and while diagnosing is a little bit more complicated i find that the the motor itself the ignition system all that stuff is a lot more reliable in general than what is on the older stuff uh, as I've said, super easy to work on. You can get right at the suspension, right at the motor. Uh, the spark plugs, which are a total pain on Camaros and stuff with the same motor and Roadmasters for that matter, are super easy to get to. Uh, reach right down there with your hand, get them out, no problem. And it makes work on this thing an absolute breeze. So we're gonna compare how they drive real quick. Just take them for a real quick drive see how they go down the road they're corvettes they handle like wagons as you know it's all just basic suspension nothing fancy no ferrari anything here but they they do what they're meant to and they they giddy up and go from a dead stop let's see what she does and 60 bam pretty quick I would say uh, this thing does have a four-speed 4L60 transmission, or maybe it's a 700R4. And in any event, it's a four-speed, and I would say that that makes this thing much, much more streetable. Overdrive is just not to be reckoned with. It is nice to be able to cruise in this thing and not have to worry about uh, just wearing an engine out so much faster. Uh, but it giddy up and goes. Probably it takes a corner nice. It's, it sits really low and it's comfortable. Okay, now we're in the 80. This thing also rides like a covered wagon. Not that that's any great surprise. And that sound it makes is superb. Nothing like a 30 V8 throwing some, some noise out some side pipes. Just a quick zero to 60 from a dead stop. Not nearly as fast, but made a whole lot more noise doing it. That much is for certain. Uh, I will say driving in this thing, you have a little bit better view. You're looking up over these sweet big humps on the thing. Uh, it looks fantastic. You sit a little bit higher in the car as well. I know they probably stuck you down lower in the newer Corvette to uh, make it a little more safe, but that isn't necessarily as much fun. Uh, going down the road, pretty similar feeling actually compared to the other one. Uh, you just kind of bounce along, but you know, sounds good and uh it feels good driving it it just uh it's not a bad looking car but at the end of the day i think a lot of what this debate comes down to is looks what car do you prefer looking at you know day in and day out it's hard it's really hard to argue against the 80 with these big sweeping curves this huge front hood and it just looks aggressive and 
Corvette like, I would say. The C4s always fell a little bit short on that for me. They looked a little bit too flat. Uh, there's no great big anything. That It looks very conservative, I would say. It's just, it's not that crazy looking that you'd like to see in a Corvette. This thing's got side pipes. This thing's got T-tops. This thing has a hood stripe. It's crazy. And while this is a convertible and has interesting interior, let's call it that, it's just a little bit bland. However, if you were going to daily drive one of these things, there's no question in my mind that I'd be picking the 90 because it's it's just su such a more streetable car. It's got the overdrive. It's got AC. It's got, you know, electronic everything. It's it's comfortable. You can get in this thing and go to California tomorrow and it wouldn't, wouldn't bother you. Uh, that being said, I am a proponent of why not both. They're cheap. You can get one of these for 3000 bucks at, a, you know, lower end up to like, five you can get a pretty decent car for five thousand bucks in one of these so why have one when you can have both they're both fun cars they both have their reasons for being uh if you want to see more of these cars let me know in the comments and thanks for watching guys